Eric here from Electrified Marina. Pretty excited today. We're out here on the Artemis made by Velar Boats down here in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm with Dustin from Velar, one of the co-founders. What are we looking at today, man? Tell me about this boat. Yeah, so glad to have you here, Eric. Um, we definitely want to show off kind of what we've been working on, what our, our dream was in building this, uh, a different boat, something that everybody could use easily, simply, and uh, reliably. Uh, as we walk through, you'll definitely see that. Uh, with, with a catamaran setup for stability and performance, put a hydrofoil on it for a semi-foiling efficiency, but also uh, suspension, maneuverability, and handling. Um, and then a functional layout with uh, you know, a European luxury touch, trying to mix mix all those aesthetics in there and, and give a great overall boat. You're calling this thing a, a prototype boat, boat number one, but for boat number one and being a prototype, it is pretty damn impressive. Uh, there's little fit and finish things that I noticed, but the level of amenities you guys put in this boat is is impressive. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a look, man. Let's start at the bow and just go back. Cool, yeah, so definitely want to be our own our own worst critics with fit and finish. A lot of things we want to improve there, but um, from a design standpoint, we have a detail built in for a mailbox bow ladder. Uh, four step, it'll come down easy on and off access from the sandbar, pull right up to the sandbar. We've got our two bow hatches, uh, again, fit and finish, but this will be a fender saddle, deep storage all the way to the got keel. It. Yeah, um, you can definitely see it, man, on both got sides. More storage in between, but you'll have a little saddle for fenders on one side saddle for an anchor. Awesome. I can't help but notice the, the plethora of cup holders here, man. It's well done. I think, uh, what do we got, what, 12, 14 on this boat for we eight got, people? Oh yeah, I have 14, 14 cup holders. You always, you know, always want to be around. You got two options basically in every seat. Functionality. Yeah, man, I like it. Looks like plenty of storage under the seats too, man. In the bow seats, there's four spots for just a simple pull-out box. It'll fit your, your wife or girlfriend's beach bag right in there so I don't have to load and unload 10 times. The box comes out by itself. You can load it at your house one time and put it right on the boat. Awesome. I see a mount for a table, looks like, behind your leg. Yep, so that'll be a bow table. Nice right in here. Perfect for a little cocktail cruise, especially once you see how smooth and quiet it is. I like it, man. Plenty of storage up here, a lot of versatility. I like the simplicity of it, man. Very few things to go wrong. You don't have a bunch of hinges and struts to worry about. Uh, any storage here on the helm? Definitely storage at the helm. Um, We'll have just your, your console box. You can be a trash can, a cooler box. You can aerate it if you want to uh, in the seat back. Nice, nice deep box built in. Awesome. Some dry storage, it looks like. Mm -hmm. On the bow seat, we we're completing the design for a bow backrest as well. That way you can recline face forward. I love it. Any room for a head in this? Any bathroom? Yep, we're, we're integrating that next boat. Next hull, nice big hatch right here to drop down into nice concealed private head right here under the deck. Awesome, look forward to seeing the different configurations. And this one is a, a pretty slick looking carbon fiber T-top. What, uh, what else should we expect in a production model? Yeah, so we'll have the T-top option. This is the very first prototype. Integrated windshield makes it in a whisper behind there running full speed. pre pre carbon fiber. Weighs eight pounds, canvas hardtop, waterproof. That's the top, the T-top. Um, we also have a bimini option. Um, both you can integrate and clip into for bow and cockpit shading. Get the whole boat shaded. Awesome, man. I see some shore power over here. Looks like 50 amp plugs. Yeah, so the way our setup right now, just standard 50 amp, 240 volt shore power. That's your plug, that's your ELCI, and that's your breaker. Nice, um, nice and simple, man. Almost all marinas have 50 amp shore power, makes it nice and easy. With this setup, 60 kilowatt hour, that's uh, from 0%, that's a uh, seven hour, eight hour charge overnight. But yeah, as we get to the bigger packs, fast charging is uh, definitely on the horizon. Beautiful, man. Let's take a look at this helm, man. Walk me through it. Absolutely, uh, 22 inch Garmin, integrated dash, Club box storage here and here, phone charger. There'll be an integrated drop-in storage down low for like a catch-all and one up top. Integrated to the T-top option on the Garmin. This is your general dash showing rudder angle. We'll show that in a minute. Battery state of charge, forward neutral, preset trim, RPM, trim setting, current draw, remaining hours. Uh, then showing your electric page. Again, we'll kind of talk about this in a minute, but from your 48 volt battery packs, running right now through the DC charger on the port side, charging your house battery, keeping it topped off on all your audio, electronics and everything, and then back to the drives with the 96 volt contactor within the drives. Your light uh, GUI, your boat functional GUI, your light page, 
Nice. I like it, man. You call this a prototype, but it's pretty damn impressive in terms of interface and what you guys have accomplished so far. Well done. I, I see a joystick here, man. This is not uh, not common in the electric boat space, and these are on uh, all the Highline boats now. And with the dual outboards you guys had, I'm, I'm curious how the integration is. This is a joystick from um, Optimus, from the Medic. So it's available on gas-powered boats, but with the electric drives, the low end torque, the low RPM precision control, low speed is scores better than, than a gas powered setup. You can twist, go 360 either way, translate directly sideways. Well, and we've got no bow thrusters in this, no stern thrusters. I mean, these these motors, I saw them earlier, it looks like they go 180 degrees, is that right? Yep, they'll go plus or minus 90, which really makes this thing work very simply. It's a direct drive, as we'll show you in a minute. Motor straight with prop, so very efficient. Let's check them out, man. And that is why you don't need a bow or a stern thruster. You can go 360 degrees turns with uh, the steering wheel or the joystick. And I mean, that uh, the pod on the bottom is pretty large, man. That torpedo is uh, a good size. Is it safe to assume the motor's down there? That's right, exactly. It's a direct drive from the motor. The lower unit is, is the motor, the windings that go straight to the prop. It's direct drive, so it gives you all that power, uh, less moving parts. Straight up the steering shaft. Um, everything's fly-by-wire, electronic, to just a few components in here, the digital control unit and the relay, just keeping everything simple. Any any maintenance on these things? Is there seawater intake? Any strainers to worry about? Any oil changes, flushes? No, there's a, uh, <laughs> we, it's just hose it off, uh, you know, salt away. We, we spend more time hosing off and cleaning the trailer than we do the drives. There's no water ingestion for cooling. There's no, uh, no oil, no filters. You know, nothing. Everything's electronic controlled and fully potted and contained, so don't have to worry about any of that. Very cool, man. Let's talk about the batteries. 48 volt Discover batteries in this setup, uh, six on each side. So that's uh, 30 kilowatts each side, 60 kilowatts total. You know, no water cooling, no glycol, uh, not even passive air. Everything's just self contained. It's a really simple set up again. Yeah, I love it, man. 48 volts is equivalent to what golf carts run on. I don't think exactly. a lot of people realize that, but you've got 48 volts, but you mentioned 25 kilowatt motors. So you, you guys stepping up that, that voltage somehow, like you can fill me in because that amperage would be relatively high. Yeah, so it's just like how we said on the electric screen, it takes each 48 volt bank and there's a contactor within the drive that makes it 96 volt uh, power uh, to give you that extra torque and that, that extra electrical push. Beautiful. And yeah, I mean, you mentioned no cooling systems. It's one thing to eliminate a gas engine. You, you eliminate a couple hundred moving parts, putting in an electric motor, but now you don't have a cooling system, no seawater intake. It's impressive what you guys are doing in terms of uh, reducing, uh, you know, potential component failures. Yep. Trying to, trying to go back to that simple, reliable, uh, easy to use. Awesome. Dustin, really appreciate your time today, man. Uh, tell us some more about the business. Where can people find you? Where do they go for more information? Yeah, definitely check us out on our website, velarboats.com. Um, you can sign up for a test ride. We'll be up and down the East Coast. Definitely love to get you on the boat. Anybody out there that's willing to ride. Awesome. Appreciate you guys checking us out. If you want more info, more content, be sure to follow and subscribe. There's nobody else putting out more content than us in the United States on electric boats. Thanks for following.